So it's finally time for me to get to my retinol, retinoid review. This is by no means exhaustive. This is just a review of the products kind of in the eco green beauty space in the retinol um, world that I've been using. I've got one, two, three, four, five products here to talk to you guys about. So before we jump into talking about the reviews specifically or the products specifically, I do want to say that of course it's really important to wear SPF if you are using a retinoid product because it does increase your skin's photosensitivity. And then just to talk about sort of terminology here because I know that words get tossed around a lot and there is some confusion. Most of you probably know this already, but just to do sort of a basic review, um, retinoids refer to vitamin A compounds. So retinoids is like an umbrella term for retinols, retinoic acid, and retinol palmitate. And so retinol palmitate is a ester of retinol. So retinoic acid is going to be the strongest form and that is because it's biologically active and it is a drug. So retinoic acid is what's in, it's Retin-A. So Retin-A is the, um, you know, it's the brand name of retinoic acid or one of the brand names of retinoic acid. And so it is, you obviously you need a prescription for that. And so retinoic acid and Retin-A is not what we're talking about here because I'm not talking about a prescription medication here. I'm gonna be talking about um, things that you can buy over the counter. So retinols is going to be one of the ingredients that we're talking about. And retinols need to be converted by your skin. There are enzymes in your skin that convert retinol to retinoic acid. So there's steps that need to be taken um, by your own skin, by your skin's chemistry with these enzymes to turn it into retinoic acid. So it's going to be, it's going to have the same effect. It's just going to take longer to get there. Uh, retinol palmitate uh, also will be converted. Like I said, it's just going to take longer because it's several steps. It's even more steps away from the retinoic acid. And then finally, we're going to be talking about hydroxypenicolone. I think I'm saying that correctly, retinoate. Hydroxypenicolone retinoate. It is HPR for short, so I am going to be calling it HPR uh, for the remainder of this review. And that is a next generation retinoid. And so it is a ester of retinoic acid and it is not a drug. Um, so that is why it is over the counter. And what it does is it binds directly to the retinoid receptors. So it's going to have the same effect as retinoic acid, but it doesn't have the same irritation as retinoic acid, such as uh, the drying and the peeling and just that general irritation that you get from retinoic acid. And so let's go ahead and get into the reviews here, but I'm just going to say right off the bat here that several of these products do have HPR in it, and that is definitely my experience that there isn't that irritation uh, that you do typically get with retinoic acid because I have used Retin-A in the past, uh, both for acne and I've used it a little bit for, not necessarily you know the anti-aging thing, but I had a couple little bumps here, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago that I was using Retin-A to try and clear that up. Uh, it actually worked really well, but of course I did have that initial peeling. Mine didn't last for very long. It was maybe just like a few weeks, not that full sort of two, three months that some people do deal with, but I have experienced that Retin-A peeling before so I know what that is all about and the um, HPR did not cause that for me with, uh, with the products that do contain it. So let's begin with the Sunday Riley Luna sleeping oil. Now I'm gonna just go ahead and start by letting you guys know in terms of ingredients which, um, which retinoid each one contains and this one does contain the HPR and that is the only retinoid that the Sunday Riley Luna does contain. It also contains um, avocado oil, grapeseed oil, blackberry seed oil, chia oil. It has chamomile, blue tansy, 
Uh, it has a fairly strong scent to it, which comes from, of course, the blue tansy, as well as neroli, blood orange, ylang ylang, vetiver, and rosemary. So if you're not really thrilled about essential oils, this would not really be for you because it is pretty strongly scented. I'm not repelled by the scent. I'm not completely in love with the scent. So it's, it's I, let's just say it's mildly pleasing to me. So as you can see, it is very blue. And so unfortunately, the blue color does not come strictly from the blue tansy oil. It also comes from green number six and violet number two. And while I knew that when I bought it, I was really wanting to compare this to the pestle and mortar because they are similar and I'll talk about that a little bit more. Uh, so I knew that going in, I, you know, it's a food grade dye and I don't know, I wasn't too, I'm, I'm not that concerned about it, but I don't know, let's, let's move into this one. And I actually did do a direct comparison for a week between these two. So let's go ahead and start talking about this one now. So this is the Pestle and Mortar Superstar. And it's very similar to the Luna in that it also contains the HPR and it also has retinal palmitate in it as well. So it has the two retinoids in it. This has grapeseed oil, jojoba oil, avocado oil, rosehip oil, pomegranate seed oil, black currant oil in it, and carrot seed oil. So carrot seed oil is also another big, you know, superstar. And then, oh, and then I also forgot, it also has black cumin seed oil, and I have also become a huge fan of black cumin seed oils. So in terms of the oils, I really do like the Superstar better because of the jojoba, the rosehip, the carrot seed oil, and the black cumin seed oil. So those oils right there do kind of lean a little bit in the favor of the Superstar for me. And then it also has cranberry seed oil, and then it also has the cold pressed and organic calendula flower oil. So there are no essential oils in here. The scent is strictly going to be from all of those oils. Now, and then it doesn't have any dyes in it. So that is a huge plus. I honestly do not know why Luna, you know, the Sunday Riley felt like they had to put in the dyes in here. So what I did was for a solid week, actually I think it might've been eight nights straight. I typically don't use a uh, retinol, retinoid product every single night. I do alternate, but I did for the purposes of this kind of, head to head battle between these two. And what I did was I used about a half a pump of the pestle and mortar on the right side of my face. And then I used, I don't know, maybe two or three drops of the Luna on the left side of my face for eight nights straight, you know, just to compare the experience of the two and just see if there were any major differences between the two. And I have to say that just in experience, having the two oils side by side over my face, I felt like having the blue dye over my whole face was disconcerting. I really didn't like it because how I had been using the Luna before was just on my freckle mustache is what I call it. I, I heard a YouTuber call it her freckle mustache. So that's what I've been calling it. So I would put, you know, skincare over the my whole face, except for here. And then I would just put the Luna here and, you know, just having it be a little bit blue, just right here. I, it didn't really bother me that much, but when I put it over my whole face and seeing this side of my face, kind of this weird grayish hue and then on the right side of my face just nothing just seeing the oils um definitely that was a serious negative on the luna side and then i think just scent wise i really did prefer just the smell coming from the essential i mean from the oils rather than having the added essential oils even though i'm not anti-essential oils I love essential oils. I love, you know, the, the scents that come from them, but I don't know why I just, I kind of was just leaning towards or gravitating towards the scent of the pestle and mortar rather than having them, um, added to the Luna. And I'm not exactly sure why, but, and then, um, and then in terms of, you know, waking up the next morning and the experience of my skin, 
I feel like they were very comparable. They both did a beautiful job and I felt like they did what they were supposed to do in terms of kind of that quote unquote, you know, anti-aging, like fine lines were softened. I feel like they both did a good job at getting, you know, starting to diminish the hyperpigmentation and, you know, minimizing the pores. I felt like, I mean, I don't know if it was really, you know, boosting up the collagen, but I felt like, you know, my skin felt a little bit plumper or whatever. But I think just overall between the head to head battle in the future, I would not buy Luna again. I would definitely be buying the Superstar between the two of these. Now moving on, the next product I have to show you is the Arcona Vitamin A Complex Repair. And it says specifically on here for PM. Now the retinoids in here are retinol and retinol palmitate. And the ingredient list here is pretty simple. Starts with witch hazel, water, glycerin, retinol, retinol palmitate, it has a fructo oligosaccharide, and this one also has glycolic acid, uh, glucosamine, there is sunflower seed oil, acacia gum, and benzyl alcohol. So pretty, you know, simple yet effective uh, ingredient list. It is interesting that you also get the glycolic acid in here. So you will be getting that, you know, kind of exfoliating property in this one as well. Now I really, really love this one. So if you're looking for um, a serum that is not in an oil, which I know a lot of you guys are, I highly, highly recommend this one. Oh, and let's just go back real quick because I do want to talk about pricing. I got the smaller one, if you can tell. This is 15 mil or a half an ounce, and this is $55. And then this is, let's see, this is 30 mils, so this is an ounce. I found this for $90 on QVC. Elsewhere, I think it will retail fully for $110, but I think on QVC, the regular price is $99. So pretty much these run about the same, but I think at QVC, they give a pretty, uh, like a discounted price. So $90 is pretty good, I would say, for this. And then the Arcona is $68, and this is 1.17 ounce. So a little bit over an ounce for $68. So this is getting a little bit lower in price as compared to the pestle and mortar. So in my experience with this Arcona, it is very comparable to the HPR, which is that, you know, the new generation retinoid. I feel like they both are very similar in their efficacy. I really love the Arcona, and I don't know if it's because it also has the glycolic acid in there, <clears throat> but when I wake up in the morning after I use it, I definitely feel like my, uh, you know, like any texture that I had the morning, or the night before is definitely smoothed. I really focus in, when I use this, I'll focus in again on the freckle mustache, and I feel like that's really helped a lot. So if you, like I said before, if you like a serum, like a true serum, that has a really nice slip to it, then I highly recommend the Arcona. All right, so moving back to a product that has the HPR in it, I do have the Ordinary, and this has been uh, renamed, and I am gonna be looking at my notes here, it has been renamed the Gran Active Retinoid 2% Emulsion. So what I've been using is the emulsion. It used to be called the Advanced Retinoid 2%. And I got this because I really do like having serums that are those true serums that are not oil-based, that really you know soak in, that you can use after a toner and then apply a moisturizer afterwards. But I don't think I would, and well here, let me just show you what it looks like. It's very milky. And I really do like the consistency. And this has actually been really lovely to use like on my chest and any leftover I use on my arms right here and on the tops of my hands. And I actually do that with all of these products, no problem, but I feel very comfortable using this very liberally because it's so inexpensive. But I don't think I would get it again because of the ingredients. And I mean, I knew it had these ingredients in it but I really wanted to try this because it's so inexpensive. It was $9.80 for 30 mil. So you can see it is just so much cheaper than any of the other, than the other three that I've mentioned. 
but you know it's got the C, I don't know if I'm going to say this correctly, C Tarith 12, C Tarith 20. So when it has that ETH at the end, you know it's ethoxylated and polysorbate 20, which is also ethoxylated. It also has phenooxyethanol in it. So, you know, using it one time, I'm not really that concerned about it. I was really mostly curious just to see how it worked. And yes, it's a beautiful retinoid product. If you're not concerned about those ingredients, I highly recommend it. If you just kind of like me, it's sort of a one-off and you just want to give it a try, I say go for it. But for me, as sort of a regular use product, I, I'm not gonna continue buying it, just not because I didn't like it. I think it is very effective, and I think it's probably as effective as um, these other three that I've talked about. Uh, but yeah, these ingredients are a deal breaker for me in terms of, again, consistent and regular use. Having said that about the emulsion formula, this is a recent purchase for me. And, you know, I know there's all the hullabaloo going on about the owner of the Ordinary and all the craziness going on around his um, social media and taking over his social media. And I'm not gonna go in on that because I'm just not in that deep with the ordinary. I don't follow him on social media. I'm not that invested really in what's going on with them. If you're really interested in it, I think uh, Carolyn Hirons in her latest empties video has done a really nice job kind of breaking it down. And I really feel like she's trying to be very um, objective about it. So I would highly recommend watching her latest video if you're uh, interested in hearing more about it. One thing though that she did leave out, I'm pretty sure she left this piece of it out, is that he has blocked a lot of his followers who spoke up and gave, uh, it sounds like just really just constructive criticism. And that I have a problem with when um, owners and company owners and brand owners start blocking followers. That has happened to me personally. I just think that is not a good way to go about running your business. So I do have a problem with that. So if that type of behavior does not get rectified, then I definitely will not be purchasing anything in the future from the ordinary. So. I'm gonna sort of be like Switzerland here, just be neutral for the most part, just kind of see how it all plays out. But if that type of thing continues, then I'm not gonna be promoting the ordinary in any way. Not, not like I do, or I don't really think I ever have. But um, anyway, that's just my little, my two cents about it so far. But before all of this went down, I did make a recent purchase probably a few weeks ago a couple, on a couple of ordinary items because I knew I was going to want to just um, see if there was going to be a good replacement for the emulsion for the Gran Active, what's it called here? The Gran Active Retinoid 2% Emulsion. So I picked up the Gran Active Retinoid 5% in Squalane and I haven't even opened up the box yet. Actually, I don't really know how important it is to show you what it looks like since the bottles all pretty much look the same, but that's what it is. Well, let's just open it up and see. Let's see what the, uh, let's see what the texture's like. I'm experiencing this for the first time right here with you guys. Um, oh, it's nice and thin. I thought maybe it would be kind of a heavier oil. So yeah, that actually feels pretty good. I like that texture. Um, squalane sometimes doesn't absorb very well. It kind of can sit on the skin, but this is absorbing nicely just right onto my dry skin, which is literally dry, but then also texture-wise it's on the dry side on my hands. So it actually feels nice, no real scent, but why I got that and I feel better about that is because the ingredients on this one do not contain all those kind of yucky ingredients that the emulsion one does. So the ingredient list is way more pure. I mean, it's got the squalane, it has a, a benzoate in it. Um, it has a dimethyl isosorbide, which I would need to look into a little bit more. It does have the HPR in it. It has a tomato fruit extract, jojoba seed oil, and that's it. So much, much more pure. So if I really fall in love with this 
and I feel like it's on par with the Superstar, then yes, I would just go ahead and, and keep purchasing this. So we'll see. Just to backtrack here for a second, I don't know if I mentioned, this is $13.90 for 30 mil. So pretty amazing price-wise. So then, um, so then let's talk about the Marie Veronique Treatment Retinol Serum. The retinol in this is encapsulated retinol. So basically that just means it's kind of like time release, which is gonna help decrease in any irritation that your skin might have from retinol. And I don't know if the retinol in the Arcona is encapsulated or not, but I did not have any irritation whatsoever. So this is the retinol, the retinol palmitate, and the glycolic acid. I did not experience any irritation from this at all. So my skin can be sensitive to certain things. I have had some sensitivities kind of recently to some stuff. That one did not cause me any irritation. So. Um, I don't really know if I particularly need retinol to be encapsulated, but nevertheless, this one is encapsulated. So if you guys are concerned at all about any irritation with retinol, this is encapsulated. This one also has vitamin C. So the situation with this is it has 7% retinol, which may seem really high. They increased the percentage of retinol because they were gonna have to keep the pH low because of the vitamin C was gonna cause breakdown of the retinol. Now, of all these products, this is the one that I was least impressed with. I really didn't notice any difference. And this was also the most expensive one. This is $110 for 30 mil. And I will not be getting this one again, because like I said, I just didn't really notice that much of a difference. I mean, it has some lovely ingredients in here, green tea infusion, Roly hydrosol, has the encapsulated retinol, glycerin, radish root ferment, has aspen bark extract, argan oil, blackberry seed oil, rosehip seed oil, vitamin E, non-GMO vitamin E, sodium hyaluronate, uh, beta gluten, and then it has the L-ascorbic acid, and then you know what? The ingredient list is actually super long. I mean, it probably has another 20 ingredients uh, more that I could read, which I'm just not going to do that to you guys. You can go and look on her, the Marie Veronique website. But I, I don't know, I just feel like um, maybe there's something going on with the low pH from the vitamin C that makes the retinol not as effective as some of the, uh, some of the other ones. I also don't know if I really feel like I want to have a product that combines vitamin C and a retinoid because what I do is I alternate nights with a retinoid product and a vitamin C, like a stronger vitamin C, like an L-ascorbic one with either the Drunk Elephant or the Arcona one, which I'm actually out of the Arcona one, so I'm pretty much just focusing on the Drunk Elephant, which is L-ascorbic acid. And then I'm usually using a vitamin C serum every morning, either the Mala Apothecary one that I love, their elixir, the Primavera elixir, or now Tony um, from Natural Logic is working on a brightening serum and that also has vitamin C in it. So I'm using vitamin C quite a bit and I don't really feel the need to be mixing the two. So I don't know, this just was a, not really very effective and I'm not gonna be getting it again. So this was really the only one for me that didn't really work. So I think I've talked enough about that one. And out of all of the products, I would say that really is just the shining one for me that I know for sure if I could only pick one to use sort of for the rest of my retinoid <laughs> skincare time, I think I would actually pick the Superstar. I really love this so much. I really think there is something to say for this new technology, the HPR. I, I really love how it feels on my skin. I love how my skin looks in the morning. I think it really has helped in 
kind of that plumping look of my skin with that, like, I, I don't know if I could say for sure that it's building up collagen or promoting collagen because I can't look at my skin under a microscope, but I feel like it kind of helps to plump things up. I think it does help with hyperpigmentation, decreasing the hyperpigmentation. And, um, you know, I don't really have big pores, so I can't really speak to the diminishing of any pores. But, um, and I think it really does kind of help with um, diminishing some fine lines as well. So I know all that kind of comes under the umbrella of the like, quote unquote, anti-aging. I don't really have a huge problem with that term. I, you know, as long as I know it's coming from a good place for people. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. I think it has good anti-aging properties. I hope that doesn't really offend anybody by me saying that. Now, I will say that in this review, I have obviously I have not given this a fair shake, the new Ordinary Grand Active Retinoid in 5% squalane. So I am going to use this and I will report back to you guys maybe in like six weeks to two months. I really need to give this a good try. And maybe I'll even do sort of that side by side you know, week or two between these two guys and see which one I like better. And you know, if this one does as good of a job as the Superstar, then you know, hey, maybe I'll go ahead and, um, and have this be my new favorite. Now, of course you can see with the packaging, this is airtight, it's not being exposed to any sun or, you know, or air, this one obviously is. There is some sun that's getting into here. Every time you take out the, um, the dropper, it's being exposed to air. But you know, if you go through it pretty quickly and for $13, it's, it's way, way cheaper than even if you know the $90 if you're getting this on sale. So the other thing I do wanna mention real quickly is at nighttime, I do take these uh, retinoid products down to my decolleté and I have been getting great results with that. I don't know if you can see here, but there's a spot right around here that was really, really dark probably a year ago and it was really bothering me. And I don't know if you can tell that it's, it's too bright here so I can't really see, but it has lightened up quite a bit. And I just feel like in general, the spots that I have here on my chest have gotten a lot lighter. And I think that's just from sun exposure, from being really young and being growing up in Phoenix, Arizona, and not wearing enough sunscreen. And also there have been some little spots and freckles on my hands that, you know, like I said, when I'm done with my skincare, I just rub it into my hands and that these uh, products as well as combined with whatever vitamin C product I'm using has also done a great job, I think, at lightening. But you know what, these spots, on my arms right here. They are so stubborn. Nothing seems to be lightening them. I'm just having a really, just like a heck of a time trying to get these things lighter. They just do not want to lighten up. Um, maybe one of these has gotten a little bit lighter, but they drive me crazy and I hate them. Um, so yeah, that's that's a real bummer. Nothing seems to want to lighten these guys up. And I've actually looked at getting them lasered, but it's so expensive and I have so many of them and it's so weird. They're just they're just right here and right here. The dermatologist was even just like a little mystified at the pattern of these um whatever freckles. Let's just call them freckles because that sounds nicer than like age spots. <laughs> so anyway, if you guys have any um products or anything helpful hints on how to get rid of these lovely lovely giant freckles that I have on my arms that would be awesome because I feel like this is the last bastion of my body care skin care regimen of how to get rid of those so like I was saying superstar is like yay I love it love it love it I'm so glad I discovered it I think this was a Carolyn Hirons recommendation from long ago and I'm glad that I I'm glad that I got it and I'll keep you posted on on this one and oh yeah and then the winner of the giveaway I will post that information below because I feel like this review has gotten pretty long I really wasn't thinking it was going to be this long but if you guys have any favorites especially in the green beauty eco space of retinoids 
retinols that you're using. If you have any experience with this new HPR, definitely let me know. And thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.